Pierre Clerc keeps his eye on the ball and hits with a sure swing. At 85, the game is as important as ever to him. I am a tennis fanatic. I played uh, tennis all my life. He's also painted and created sculpture most of his life. I started uh, fooling around with the idea of the cardboards in wine cases. Pierre's work is in the Museum of Modern Art and the Guggenheim. The shapes and colors he plays with in the abstract pieces intrigue him. He teases out the ideas. This is a black and white version of a colored painting that I had done uh, just because I was curious to find out what would happen if I tried to translate something into black and white that was quite colorful. It's that kind of curiosity that led Pierre to consider upending his life to begin somewhere new. At 75, I wanted to shake up my life or do something different or meet different people. Uh, I was bored with, I'd been in Soho or I'd been in New York for the last 40 years. So with characteristic optimism, curiosity, and determination that can serve as an inspiration to us all, Pierre determined to move forward, reaching for something new. What propelled him? The curiosity and the belief that, uh, or the illusion, if you want to call it that, that you're going to do better tomorrow or get lucky tomorrow and find something that you hadn't seen or discovered before. So. Uh, so I think optimism has to enter into the, uh, into the mix. He sold his loft on Grand Street in Soho and began to think about where he and his wife Linda Mandel might live. I didn't want to move to Florida or California or the Caribbean or Mexico. I mean, we considered all these. We had a, a friend of ours, a New York architect, who, had, who has houses all over the place, and he uh, invited us to come visit with him in southern France. And they fell in love with the landscape in southern Bordeaux in a property called Le Laurier. It's behind stone walls, a world unto itself. The house was built as a monastery, and Pierre believes part of their home dates back to the 13th or 14th century. Pierre turned a barn into a studio, dotted the grounds with a sculpture, and Linda decorated the vast spaces with Pierre's work. Suddenly, the French art world discovered him. So I was lucky in finding a, uh, a friend who introduced me to this gallery in Bordeaux, and uh, who now have a gallery in Paris as well. But they've promoted me, put my show, my work in international shows in, in Paris and in New York. And uh, last year, year before, I had a show in Berlin. There was a big show in Bordeaux in a submarine and another smaller show in a gallery in San Emilion. For each show, there's new work. You try this, you try that, and, and most of the time you fail, but then if you're, uh, if you're persistent, you uh, occasionally hit on something that might be interesting and, and valid and worthwhile doing. And so, uh, uh, obviously, uh, there's a certain amount of self-delusion going on as a, a rationalization. The appreciation of his work in France and Europe reaffirms Pierre's belief that taking chances at any age pays off. I figure if you have something to contribute and you work and, and develop that and, and you're somewhat successful at it, you've done your bit to advance the uh, your community or humanity or something without being too pretentious about it. But again, Pierre Clerc continues to explore. And like Matisse in his later years, Pierre experiments with collages now. So these are recent collages I've been working on. There is one more thing. Pierre's wife Linda makes only cameo appearances on video, but he says their strong relationship helps to keep him moving forward. Well, having a good partner to share all this and uh, the, the good times with the bad times is, is, uh, is uh, primordial and crucial and indispensable. And, uh, and to have a partner that, that is really there with you uh, and Linda has been that for me for 25, uh, for 35 years. And, uh, and 
we expect to go on for another 35 years. <laughs> Barbara Nevins-Taylor, Consumer Mojo.